Becky's oldest son and Isaac and Chloe's brother Jake, uh, I found out was also working on a series like this. So him and I got together on Thursday night and ex- compared notes, exchanged notes, and and uh, and so some of those things that we're not going to see today, but in the coming weeks, uh, with visual aids, videos, uh, some different graphs that I've done, a lot of things that he's done. Uh, so I want to just give him uh, credit. Uh, as the one that's putting these things together. Um, but it's exciting when I heard that, that God was speaking to his heart in the same arena of the topic of God, creation, and a conscience. And there is a debate brewing. There is a debate brewing all the time about trying to reach an infallible world through creation. And you may, if you've listened to the news, if you listen to uh, the radio, if you read the newspaper, nobody does that anymore. But on your phone, if you're checking out your favorite, your favorite, um, you know, blogs or whatever, you probably heard of the phrase AI, which stands for artificial intelligence. And you, you will see that there is this idea that science can create an infallible entity or an infallible creation and that an invention can be given such as a robot or other types of inventions can be given a conscience or that science can even rewrite with infallible meaning scripture such as the Lord's Prayer, such as Psalm 23. Uh, There are so many things in which uh, the computer is reinventing even the Bible. But I want to tell you guys, as a history guy, since the fall of man, but especially the Tower of Babel, there has been something called humanism. Humanism is where there is a entity, either a person or a thing, that believes they are greater than or have the potential to be greater than God himself. Okay, and that's the world that we are living in. And Christians must be aware of what's happening and unfolding. But what I'm going to be doing over the next, you know, five parts to the, or four parts to this series, today's kind of like the intro. What I'm going to be doing is, is, pre- is pretend that I, or pretend that this whole topic, this whole deception, this artificial intelligence, this AI, this fight to defend against the vials and traps of the devil is basically like a magician. And the the work of the adversary is much centered around deceit, deceiving individuals, uh, artificial things, just like a magician who is talking with his mouth, moving his hands around, doing things to try to pull your eye away from what he's really doing, which is hiding something in his hand or what they call palming, or what is he really doing? As he's talking and his hands are behind his back, he's moving a key from the inside of his sleeve into his hand very discreetly and unlocking the handcuffs behind, you know, while he's talking and making you look good and making you feel good and putting your attention somewhere else. And as I said last week, according to the University of Hartford, 47% of people when they're doing one thing, are, are usually primarily thinking about something else, which means a magician can easily deceive you. Well, in this world, the magician named Satan, the father of deception, the father of lies, is deceiving people left and right. But I want to present to you today, not artificial intelligence, I want to present to you today reality. I want to present to you today not the counterfeit, but the thing that is, uh, that is genuine, that is real, that is authenticity before your very eye today, while at the same time letting you know what the magician's tricks are. Letting you know what the strategy is going to be. Letting you know how things are going to unfold. You say, Pastor, how can you do that? Because the Bible defines us in the Old and New Testament how the spirit of the Antichrist is going to work, how the adversary, the father of lies, operates. But if you do not know what is genuine, you do not know what is authentic. If you do not know what is real, you are easily 
going to fall for what is fake. And this series is all about unmasking the magician, telling you his secrets. And the best way to do that is to first present reality to you. And the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is filled with creation, is filled with a creator defining exactly how he has made things, how our body, how our soul, and how our spirit work. And my job is to go into, I pray today and the rest of this series give you reason to worship a God like you've never worshipped before. Because I think you're going to find out what science is trying to find by giving a conscience to a creation is we've already had what they're trying to find. And that through Christ, we can have a worshipful, real relationship with the Creator Himself. That is an amazing thought. Because what's going on and what is happening and what the desire is, and I just, you say, Pastor, you know, where in the world did this series come from? Well, one, God speaks to my heart. God does different things. I've been praying about this anyway. But on Tuesday, my wife and daughter and I, we went to the Science Museum in Boston. And I went to this class or this video presentation by Dan Brown entitled God science and creation and I'm sitting in here and this museum is not for Christians I went not to go to get affirmed I went to go to find out what the other side's doing what the other side believes and they clearly believe that science can give a creation a conscience and that conscience is going to want to worship Not worship God, but worship their creator. You say, who is their creator? It's human. That's what humanism is. From the Tower of Babel, when they thought they could defeat God, it's exactly what's happening now, is that the creation is going to be given a conscience to worship their creator, and their creator is not God as we know it, but the human himself. This is all lines up with Scripture. All lines up with things leading up to the Battle of Armageddon. We could sit back and we, those of you that were here on uh, Wednesday, you heard the discussion that, that, that because it was really kind of hot off the press and, and we brought it up in our Revelation series. And I can tell you, you can't make this stuff up as we see things unfold right before our eye. But church, I don't want anybody here deceived. I want you to know what the magician's trying to do. But more importantly, I want you to be able to worship God and love Him with our heart, soul, mind, and strength no matter what comes your way. No matter what obstacles, no matter what adversity, no matter what the president's going to say at the State of the Union dress in February or March, no matter what new movie comes out, no matter what new idea, no new fad that's going to come out in a world, which, by the way, all humanists and real humanists, they believe in something called depopulation, meaning the earth has too many people. Okay? And so to take to go from 8 billion people to really what the earth can afford without climate change is about 2 billion people. Well, what in the world is going to happen to 6 billion people? Well, abortion, a lot of... Babies in Hawaii. As the fire was coming through, do you guys know that there was a two-mile backup in the a car-to-car, bumper-to-bumper traffic, people trying to flee the islands and get to the water, but the police were told, don't let them move. Then the firestorm came right down and they all burned. In America, that's America. Hawaii is an American state. If you guys didn't know it, 1959, that became the 50th states. These are our fellow citizens. 
They were all lined up and cooked. They were trying to get to the water. They're on an island. They wouldn't let them. They asked the officer why, because they'd, my, my, my superiors told me no. The fire came through and cooked them all right there. Well, there's too many people anyway, so what's the big deal? Church, we have to know what is God and what is not. And our Creator is a God of life. America is supposed to be about life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. God is a holy God who is, gives life. We were given instruction in Genesis 1 to do what? Leave father and mother, become one flesh, which means get married, and be fruitful and multiply. That's God's intent. What does humanism, the science community, hey, we're too many of us. We've got to depopulate. There's not enough abortion in the world. People got to stop having sex, and so let's just become asexual. Because there's too many people. Too many rotten-nosed kids. Too many people that are committing suicide in childhood years. We still have work to do. Any of you that study Margaret Sanger, you know all that she believes. But today... Let's look at the verses of Scripture about how it's supposed to be. You guys would stand with me for the reading of God's Word. Genesis 1, and then we're going to jump to Isaiah 40. Genesis 1, verses 1 and 2. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Isaiah 40, beginning at verse 28. Have you not known, have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. His po he gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And lastly, I'm going to go ahead and read it now. Verse uh, Psalm 121. Psalm 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade. At your right hand, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word here this morning. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Today, it is one of the greatest privileges I have to present to you a creator. And as we sang this morning in the song, You Are Not Alone, a creator that was not created by human hands. All that AI is doing is a creation by science and human hands. Even the name AI, artificial, should tell you something. It would not surprise me in the coming years, just like with global warming, when it's now climate change, we're going to see that term artificial most likely is going to change because people will catch on to that. 
just as we did global warming, especially in parts of the world where the temperature actually is increasing. I'm sorry, decreasing. It's getting colder in some places. Don't worry, the polar bear is not going to go extinct. But at the beginning of creation, these two verses, even in Christian circles, have become of debates. Did God really create in seven days? Was there time in between those days? Was this talking about after the dinosaurs and after the flood of Noah's day? No, 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 no. As Christians, I am here to persuade you and to inform you for the first time, if you've never known this, Jesus, his name is Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end. This is talking about the time of our beginning. You heard me guys share about the when science was hijacked and about the whole series that I did. And, the, and then two years ago, the spirit of the Antichrist. These two series basically are coming together now by God's timing. But as believers, we must know and understand that God is the creator. And it's God who's brought creation to this world and animals and plants, and lastly with human beings. It's God who is working. It is God who is the master. It is God who is putting all these pieces together. Even as the times we are living, it is the Father's will for you and I to be alive and to see this unfold right before our eyes. It is a time for us as believers to know that Jesus, the Creator, the Alpha and Omega, the Father's will is happening now. Now, church, if you're here and you do not believe that, you are, you are opening the door to be deceived. You're, you're the person that's watching the magician do his work, and you actually believe that when the dude gets sawed in half, that he actually got sawed in half. You say, Pastor, I'm not that naive. Yeah, you are. You are that naive. You are going to be sadly deceived you're going you're gonna to be the one who oohs and ahs and faints when they see the two boxes split apart and it looks like there's two people or two parts of the body, the top part and the bottom part, and they're both just kicking kind of like a chicken that just had its head cut off. Foundations of faith are so important. So important. And notice in Genesis 1, 1, in the beginning, the scripture is clear. God created the heavens and the earth. Later on in John 1, we see the same description. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. We, if we don't have that foundation, it's just kind of like in mathematics class. If you forget how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, there's no way you're going to be able to do formulas in mathematics of algebra unless you just type it into a calculator. But if you don't have the basics, this is something basic. This is something that in all children's Bibles, when you, when you get a children's Bible or even a baby Bible, talks about the creation of God. But there are many that are losing this foundation. Church, we should praise God for this awesome creation. Because he not only created the heavens and the earth, he's the one that created you. Have you ever thought about that? He is the one that knitted you in your mother's womb, the scripture says in Jeremiah 1. He is the one that has molded you and shaped you the way you are. He is the one that has, has given, has breathed life into you. He is the one that deserves our praise, therefore. The one that deserves our respect. The one that deserves our attention and our focus. When we lose sight of that, the competitor, the AI, the science community, the atheistic community, the community of humanism that is trying to defeat this God. And let me just say this, Jesus put it best. Either you are a friend of God or you're his enemy. Either you're with him or you're against him. There is no in-between. I was sitting on the porch with my father this week, and, and for the most of the time, 
we don't have too many profound moments anymore. But I got home and I'm sitting out on the porch and uh, sitting out there talking to dad, see how the day went. He's out there and, and asking all, you know, different things. And he said, just let me tell you something. Either you're walking with God or you're not. And there's no in between. And then he went on back to doing his puzzles. It's kind of like he gave me 30 seconds of his time of the old dad that walked with God, that knew the word. And I'm sitting there taking it all in because there might not be another profound moment. But he certainly gave me one on Thursday afternoon when I got home. Just either you walk it with God or you're not. There's no in between. Church, we're either walking with God and our foundation must be that He is the one that has created the world. He is the one that longs for our praise. You want to know why? Just as God told Moses in Exodus 20, I am jealous for you. God is jealous for us. He is jealous for His creation. What the AI community is wanting to do by building into their creation that the human race be worshipped, be revered, we already have. Why do we want to find a duplicate? We already got the real deal. Why do we want to find a fake? Why do we want to find something that's going to deceive us? God, we praise you because you're good. We praise you because you're awesome. Now, some of you might be sitting out there saying, Pastor, I need something to help me with the mess I'm in. I need to be encouraged. I need affirmation. I need something to keep me going on. Well, how about this? God, the one that created you, is still on your sides. Praise God. The one that has already given us truth. The one that has already given us answers. Do you know that a lot, a lot of our tax dollars that are killing babies today, there are a lot of our tax dollars that are funding this AI stuff? Your hard-earned money. In the state of Maine, especially, our tax dollars that are funding, we're one, we're the, I think maybe still the only state where state-funded taxes, you know, are going to pay for abortion. You know what else they're going to go pay for? Pre-puberty drugs for your 12 and 13 and 14-year-olds without your consent. We need to know what's going on. People will vote. Because elections have consequences. If they've been educated on what in the world is going on. You sit home in November of this year. There's like seven people's vetoes this year. It's going to be a lot. And this is an odd year. There's no elections for politicians at the federal, state, and local level. Because it's an odd year. Next year, the president, Senator King, uh, uh, Representative Golden, uh, I mean, all, uh, next year is going to be busy with people, but this year is all about issues. In November, elections have consequences. This series, my prayer is, is to bring you to understand who God is and a reason to worship and that you have the help of your Creator. In that video with Dan Brown, as he was doing the presenting, and, and I'm listening to it, and, and one of the questions that was asked was, well, what do you do if, if, the, if the creation, what if you do if the AI falls apart? Well, who's going to fix it? Guess what? The human's going to fix it. The fallible human is going to fix the mess. I don't want to go to a human. I want to go to God. God, fix me right. But people are believing that stuff. They're believing even the rewrite the Bible, rewrite facts, rewrite history. Rewrite, rewrite, rewrite. The scripture says that you'll be blessed if you read the book of Revelation. The scripture says and warns us do not add or take away from scripture. Verse 2 of Genesis 1, the earth was without form. And void and darkness was on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. How many of you want the Spirit of God hovering over you? I do, church. That gives, that brings, when we sing that song today, He has no rival, He has no equal. Holy Spirit, come hover over us. 
When we had prayer this morning before worship team practice, Holy Spirit, fall down upon us, rise up from within us, but hover over our being. Just as you were hovering over at creation in Genesis 1 verse 2, hover over us today. To think that we're seeing humanism being set up for its final battle, which is Armageddon. Jesus and his followers against the Antichrist and his. Many who have been deceived by a magician. The mouthpiece being the false prophet. And as we learned last Wednesday night, are going to get pummeled and pummeled quickly. Because the real God has no rival. I want to be on that team. Football starts next week. Anybody here get the Browns jersey yet? Get ready. Football starts. How are the Patriots going to do? Anybody going to beat the Chiefs? How's uh, Rodgers going to do as a Jet? All these different things. But you know what? There's 32 teams in the NFL. Only one of those teams are going to win the Super Bowl. Everybody else is going to lose. With God on his team, we all win. That's the one I want to worship. That's the one I want to support and praise. That's the one I want to seek out, praise the Lord. Isaiah 40, 28. Here's the question for us all and anyone watching on Facebook this morning. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Maybe there's somebody here and you've never heard a message like this. There are some pastors that think just come in, just... Feed those who are seeking and looking for something. Let the believers feed themselves. And we know what that's doing. People are starving spiritually everywhere. Let's just, let's just sit back and, and just give some help, help, self-help strategies and just help you cope. That's not going to happen here. My job is to equip you and to present the full gospel to you. The full word of God. To be to bring messages that are relevant for us today and what's going on in our world. Why? So we can understand the signs of the times and understand what in the world is going on. Because some of us who are uneducated think this is all just a science fiction movie. Just a comic. Just a storyline in the next Batman movie. This is a real deal strategy that is being released and loosed into a world that is lost. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Some of you here do not have a biblical worldview and therefore cannot understand the events of world history. I've taught world history eight times in my life, the latest being this past year. I have studied world history since I was in high school, taking AP classes in the 10th grade. A student of history, degreed in history. Went to one of the most liberal schools in the eastern United States, St. Mary's College in St. Mary's City, Maryland. It is the biggest woke school in the mid-Atlantic region. They keep sending me money as an alumni because they're struggling. Just so you know, I haven't given them a dime. But if you go to that school and you go outside of a place called Charles Hall, you will see this, this ideal that God's word is fallible and humanism is prevalent with statues and teachings. But also in that place, you'll find a brick with my name on it, class of 2000, that my parents paid $500 for, so that there could be a forever record that their son, my brother, he's 
he's a political science major, so he's over in a different hall. The, I was a history guy, so uh, he's over in a different hall, but paid for him too, that their sons graduated in 2000 and 2001. And I'm thinking, I've got this brick in a place that's filled with artificial junk. That's where I got saved. I hadn't heard. I did not know. But I can tell you when I met the Master, my perception changed. Sharing the gospel, examining, looking around, and examining what we are dealing with even today as a culture. And get this, it's only going to get worse. I want to sound the alarm and cause us to praise the one true God. Because if you don't know him, if you haven't heard, you could very well be praising the magician as he stands on the TV every night and deceives you, causes you to believe something is possible, such as a creation having a conscience with a soul whose God is a human. Some of you here, your children have already been deceived. They don't know who they are. Clueless, changing night and day. Some of you here are asking God to do an amazing miracle because the track that your family is on is a track of deceit. And we know what the adversary tries to do. He tries to seek, kill, and destroy. And some of you have loved ones, and they're on that path. Tonight, when we have prayer service, I invite you all to come and pray for your kids. You think your kids just going to change because they change? I know why. what got a hold of me was I have a praying mother and father. Praise God. Come and stand in the gap. I know some of you here, it's been so, you don't even know what to call your child. Some of you here, maybe your children are already taking the pre-puberty prescriptions. I was reading at the Science Museum, where they have a wing on this stuff where there's a concern now that biological females are gonna, that are living as transgender males taking these puberty prescriptions, and if they take them for at least three years, could very well go into menopause by the age of 22. Wow. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The second part of verse 28, the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth. Have we not heard of the real creator? This is the one we worship. This is the one we praise. This is the one we serve. This is the one we get an opportunity to say, God, your word is sovereign. Your word is true. Your word is worth defending. Pastor Joe asked it during worship today. Are we willing to defend our Lord to the very end? Stand up for his word. Raise our children with his word. Live according to his word. That's the one we praise. Praise is more than just a worship song. Praise is a lifestyle. A lifestyle that's, that's evident that we are following in the example of Jesus Christ. To be like him. Not to be like this AI world, this science world, this humanistic world is really the better term. Humanism. Being given the power of a deity. You say, that's just hogwash. People believe it. Even some Christians are starting to be persuaded. Men and women, boys and girls that were raised in the children's church of this church are now clueless and don't know who they are. You don't believe me? Go back and look through our, our photo album books or our Facebook pages. People that have been baptized, people that sang, people that were part of Bible quiz, people that were actors in human videos are all confused. They all have forgotten the everlasting God, the Lord and creator of the ends of the earth. 
And notice what Isaiah says here, or the Lord says through Isaiah at the end of verse 28, says this, Neither faints nor is weary, his understanding is unsearchable. That's the one we worship. You say, Pastor, is God starting to lose patience? Well, he is slow to anger, but I can tell you right now, he's not getting tired. There are people who are thinking, well, God's just going to run out of gas. No, now, Christians, we might get tired if we get disconnected from the branch. I'm sorry, the vine. We as the branch, we might get tired and get disconnected and therefore break off and become a twig or a stick. But God is not getting tired. He is not getting weary. His, his understanding is not becoming lost. That's the one we praise. That's the one we glorify. That's the one you and I serve if we're a believer. He doesn't even faint. He is very much in control today. Very much in control. Don't, make, don't fall for one lie. Well, how could God send that that firestorm how could God send that hurricane where is God in the midst of this tragedy he must be too tired that's not what the scripture says you have been deceived you give yourself away as a person with very little faith or maybe none at all church he doesn't get weary he doesn't faint his understanding does not become lost to where you can't search it. Jesus said, if you seek me, you will find me. Amen. What's going on in our world today? He gives power to the weak. Now, this is where we come in. This is where we're going to finish this thing today. With the last few verses here in Isaiah 40, and then look at Psalm 121. But we're going to finish this with God being the one who wants to help us and give us power. What does God do? He gives power to the weak. Now, if you believe that God is weak himself, he can't give you any power because he's barely surviving. Or a boxing term, God's on the ropes. God ain't on no ropes, church. If you, his creation... He's still the creator who doesn't get weak, who doesn't get fatigued or doesn't faint, is ready to give you power. Power to live, power to do all to stand. As just as Paul wrote in Ephesians 6 when he gave the armor of God, Ephesians 6 stand, do all to stand against the wiles of the devil. Do all to stand gives power to the weak. You must admit, therefore, you're weak. If your faith, if you're struggling, if you're listening, buying into this magician who is performing all these illusions before you, he gives power to the weak. And this is far greater power than you can ever get by visiting Dawson in the gym. Now, I want to encourage you, go visit him in the gym. He's a great man of God who will help you. But God, the creator gives far more power than any human being could ever get. He gives power to the weak. And to those who have no might, he increases strength. Anybody here need some increase in the strength departments? Praise the Lord's. Your creator is on the scene. Oh, where are you looking for this help? Where are you looking for this strength? Well, if I just type it into the machine, Church, think about this. Jake and I were thinking about this. There's going to come a time where you will not need a doctor. Just type it into a machine. Tell you what to do. Tell you how, it'll even tell you how you feel. You ain't, I mean, we thought, hey, we don't need the toll booth attendant anymore. Okay, the Walmart cashier, they're going bye-bye. But you don't need me to doctor. You don't need a teacher. You don't need a pastor. You don't need nobody. Just type it in. Your conscience will be fed by a computer. Why not? It's convenient. Just stay home in your pajamas. Stay safe and be at peace. Nobody's going to know. It's all confidential. Just type it on in. I told Andy Wednesday, and I said, brother, you better retire quick because your job may not be here in 10 years. 
I might be looking for a job too. Church, let's just get real. My wife, she's a recruiter, but she don't recruit inventions, she recruits people. But if the computer can do it all, who needs a scientist? Other than to be worshipped, which there are many believe that's how they're going to set it up, according, including Dan Brown. But he increases strength. You say, Pastor, our young people in here over there. Look at the Clark boys over there. Drew's going to be 16 in a week, right, Drew? And Lucas just turned 12, right, Lucas? Look how young these boys look. They are youthful. They got all the strength in the world. Pastor Joe don't have to do a thing, just sends his boys out, right? Boys, does, does, he, does dad do anything? Or you guys got a dad sends you out? Come on. You can be honest here. I know how it is. My dad had some sons, too. Just you go lift the wood. You go. That's why I had kids. Anybody here, their dad, parents ever say tell you that? That's why I had kids. Dad, you should be loading wood. No, I got three sons to load the wood. And if you want to stay warm, you better get out and get that wood. But look at this, young people. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. Church, if God's not the one supplying your power, you going down. That's why Jesus said in the last day, blessed are those that endure to the end because they shall be saved. Say, I'm young. I got this. I'm young. I don't care how young you are. You're going to faint. You're going to grow weary. You're going to die just like that branch that breaks off from the tree. But look at this, verse 31. You guys, some of you have this magnet on your fridge. You say, Pastor, how do you know what I got on my fridge? Because I've been to your house. I look at your fridge, not what's in it, what's on the outside. Everybody shows me their beautiful pictures. And this is what happens. You know it, parents. We show pictures of our little kids. We very seldom to somebody say, oh, look at my teenager. They show me pictures of when that teenager was a little baby. Who do you think he looks like, Pastor? true but i see this verse oftentimes on people's fridges maybe you have a bookmark you often see it in your bible as well verse 31 but those who wait on the lord who are you waiting on today you waiting on the creator or are you waiting on medicine to give you the next answer are you waiting on artificial intelligence people that read have their horoscope, checking that out, having their palm read. They want to talk to the dead. By the way, AI is working on that. So you can talk to the dead. They have it all done. Who are you waiting on for answers and strength today? I just need whatever I can get to survive. Well, you're going down quick. But those who wait on the Lord, I pray it's all of us in here and everybody watching shall renew their strength. The Creator will not leave you hanging. He will minister to you and give you strength, praise God. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. We sing that song sometimes. Church, will you wait on God, the Creator? Will you wait on the real deal, the one in which we worship the one that wants to help his creation, not with an artificial answer, but with reality, with truth, with blessing, with power and strength. Praise God. Are you waiting on it? Say, Pastor, how do I wait on God? The best place is from your knees. The best place is with your face in the Word and letting God minister to you. I posted it last night. My brother-in-law, Steve, had posted it originally. Mary's oldest brother. The one who, she's the baby of nine, the one that let us stay with him the first couple of months when we came to Rumford 20 years ago. He lived in South Paris. Then. He's now retired. Half the time he's in Florida. The other half he's over in New Hampshire. But he posted this, and he said in the post, 
A Bible that's worn and used usually means the person reading it is not. If our Bibles have dust, we're probably weak, vulnerable, and very much in trouble. We wait on God and know, God, you're going to keep your words. If you're sitting there thinking that God has lost his strength and has become weak and weary and has fainted and is no longer being able to be sought out, you are not waiting on God. You are waiting on something else. And you're a prime target for a humanist to deceive you. And prime, very prime, for the spirit of the Antichrist to deceive you. I want to finish with Psalm 121. Appreciate your patience today. But here is a psalmist who writes, I will lift my eyes to the hills. He's the one who creates. Where, 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 from whence comes my help? If it doesn't come from the creator of the hills, who in the world is it coming from? I will lift my eyes. When we lift our eyes up, that is declaring that we recognize we're standing in the need of prayer. It's not my mother. It's not my father. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. My help comes from the Lord, who did what? Made heaven and earth. That's the one we praise. That's the one we worship. That's the one we serve. The one who created it. Not a spirit, not a realm, not some artificial. That's why God's word says don't put your children through that. Stay away from that sorcery. Stay away from that medium. Stay away from artificial intelligence. Don't seek it out. My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Do you believe that today? Is that how you're walking? Because one thing's for sure, we can nod our heads. We can say, yeah, that's, that's me. Hallelujah. You'll be tested when you get home. You'll be tested when you watch the news or you get in trouble. You'll be tested soon enough. Anybody can shout hallelujah. Actions speak louder than words. He will not allow your foot to be moved. Come on, church. This is the one who gives us strength and help in the, in the midst of our weakness. He, will keep, he who keeps you will not slumber. The Lord's not going to get tired. You say, Pastor, I, 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 I am a real case. I am one for the books. I have, I have, you don't know what I've done. Maybe I don't know, but the one who created you does. It's like parents who always know what their kids are up to. Man, mom, what do you got, eyes in the back of your head? How do you know what's going on? How do you know what's happening? God has greater instinct and knowledge than any mom ever can. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither sleep nor, nor slumber nor sleep. Brandy talked about the blessing of Israel today. Why we must continue to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. God is not sleeping as everything is unfolding. People keep saying, where was God in the midst of the Holocaust? God was right there holding them up keeping the promise with Abraham and allowing them finally to wake up and smell the coffee of how bad Hitler was and how far they had gone from God and they repented. And what did God do? He rebore them as a nation. God's hand was upon them the whole time. The Lord is your keeper. Is the Lord your keeper today? That's one thing about AI. Their keeper's got to be the human. Got to fix it when it breaks. God has to be worshipped and praised. Anything inside a machine has to be programmed, including us. Our bodies are like a machine, but we are programmed by God. God who has set us up the way we are. Why is medicine always... We are, 
Like I said in Sunday school, I live either at the hospital, at a doctor's office, or the pharmacy. And I go to these different doctors and that doctor and, and this doctor and this specialist and going all over the state of Maine, it seems like from Portland to Lewiston to Farmington to Rumford. And then the doctor say to you, I don't know. My wife had a little medical issue. We spent over two grand and what did we get? I don't know. And I don't know, don't help when she's in pain. Who is your keeper? The Lord is your shade and at your right hand. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father now. Who is at your right hand? Is it God or is it something else? Is God providing shade to you? Or are you going to get burned up by the sin of this world? The, sh the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. This is almost like Psalm 91. God will be your protector. God will protect the one we worship, the one we praise, will protect you. The Lord, verse 7, the Lord shall preserve you all from evil. There's a lot of evil in this world. True science has been hijacked. History is not being told. Revisionism is real everywhere. Humanism is not being declared as the reason that, ex that or the understanding that brings reason to world history. But the Lord will preserve you from evil. He shall preserve your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotion. Your soul is what Jesus saved at Calvary. You know, Jesus did not save your body because your body, you still sin with it. Nobody here has a perfect body. Your body does not become perfected until you are glorified at the rapture when the dead in Christ shall rise first when your body is reunited with the soul or the dead in Christ shall rise after that. In verse 8, the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in. One of, the greatest preservative, one of the greatest preservatives is salt to meat. Back in the day where they didn't have refrigerators and freezers, Chris remembers this. They had to put salt on all the meat to preserve. What did Jesus ask us to be? Salt and light. We have been called to preserve. We can't do that. If the Lord is not our creator and the one in which we lift up our eyes to when we are weak and in troubled, we will rot, we will decay. But the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. If you trust the Lord, he will preserve you forever and you can take it to the bank. You say, Pastor, but... But this stuff, this science, that's just so interesting, so interesting. They said the same thing about the Ouija board, too. And you know what that did? That destroyed a whole generation. Oh, it was cute. Playing cards, they were cute. Let me just put it this way, as my mama said to me, just if you play with fire... You're going to get burns. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. And I want to finish with just one more verse. And I'm just going to read it. It speaks enough for itself. Romans 125. And this is after Paul exhorts the the just to live by faith. He declares the wrath of God on unrighteousness and clearly defines what that is from sexual sin to lewd behavior to how we talk with our mouths. But Romans one twenty five, the Apostle Paul says this, who exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worships 
and serve the create creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. The unrighteous who has exchanged truth for a lie, who is worshiping a creature rather than the creator. May that not be you and I. May we instead be worshiping the creator and preaching the gospel to every creature. And Jesus said in Mark 14 to preach the gospel to every creature. Lay hands on the sick. Cast out demons. Teach the word in my name. Pick up a serpent in my name. Do the work of your Savior in my name. But may we worship the Creator and preach the gospel to every creature. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for your word. Lord, this is just an intro. I know it's warm in here. At least I am. And Lord, I know this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I pray, Lord, that every Christian in here is waking up and smelling the Folgers. That life, as defined in your prophetic word, O oh Lord, is being carried out before our very eye. And in the coming weeks, as we, as we break this thing down, as the secrets are revealed to the magician, the father of lies, the deceiver, Satan himself, Lord, I pray this congregation will be equipped and educated. But I also pray right now, Lord, as we studied today, those that wait upon the Lord, Father God, I pray right now that believers in this house will just come to the altar and seek your face and wait on you. Even if they are doing perfectly fine, may they come and seek your face and wait on you, Lord. If there is somebody here and they're weak, they're, they're tired, they need their strength renewed spiritually, they're vulnerable, they're on the hook to the adversary's temptation, Lord, your word says those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. If you need your strength renewed, come. If you want to come wait on God, come. If you have loved ones that don't know if they're a boy or a girl, come. They don't know the Creator. Come. You yourself are confused. Well, come. Come talk with Jesus, the Creator of the world. If you need to cry out to the Maker of the hills, come and say, Lord, I'm lifting my eyes to you. Maybe you're struggling with a curiosity that's going, to that's going to cause you to be deceived. Maybe you're going to be the next Samson when he was deceived by Delilah. Say, God, forgive me. God, help me. Thank you for bringing me here today for this message. Remember, Satan, he was able to deceive or, or talk the one-third of the angels to follow him. He will deceive you too. Come. If you have nieces or nephews, grandchildren, children, siblings, you have friends that are confused in this world, you know they're going to be on the hook to the, the movement that's, that's rooted in humanism and, and what we call AI in science terms today. Come and stand in the gap for them before it's too late. You're worried about our state. You're worried about our country. You're worried about this depopulation idea. Come, seek the face of God. 
If God is speaking to your heart, come seek his face while he may be found in Jesus' name.
Let's stand and we'll sing that Emmanuel. 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 His name is called Emmanuel. Is God. Father God, <laughs> what a help to know you are our Emmanuel. We don't have to wait till Christmas to hear that, Lord. We can declare it today. You are God with us. You are the creator who's not just up in a dwelling place in heaven, but Lord, we have access to you through the Holy Spirit who is here. And Lord, you live inside our hearts, more specifically our soul, because it is saved. It is washed in the blood. Our spirit is connected with yours, and therefore we can walk in reconciliation with God, our creator, our ever-present help, and Lord Jesus, I pray for this congregation one more time. For Lord, I know there are some who are going to go home to a test. Some whose children and family is lost. And Lord, even though the world may say it's okay, we know it's not. We know your words. We know and will know because we've heard. Have we not known? Have we not heard? Well, we've heard. We're going to know. And, Lord, we can't say in one breath we love you and in the next breath deny your word. First John tells us that's the definition of a hypocrite and not a child of God. Lord, this is not going to the fruit stand and picking out what fruit we want and leaving what we don't. Your word in Genesis 1 lays the foundation for human history. Matter of fact, Jesus, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall last forever. <laughs> 